Treasurer Reese, um, a request was made that all agencies provide the committee with information on cost savings and efficiencies that could be implemented to reduce spending or control uh, spending increases. And we did receive your document shortly before we came down to this meeting. I just yeah. wonder, since we haven't really had a chance to look through it, if you would talk a little bit about it? Sure. I'll give it to you in, in very broad brush strokes very quickly. Now, there are six points here. The first is uh, the cost savings on modernizing our Bureau of Unclaimed Properties publishing requirements. It's, uh, it, it's a $3 million spend, and we think that uh, it, it relies on, it doesn't take into account that we're now in the internet age, and most people get their information across from the internet, um, we, um, and that um, we can get probably even a bigger bang for the buck if we were allowed to advertise in a way that we think is uh, allow uh, um, to cast a wider tent to make more people uh, take advantage of going to uh, the Treasury site. Number two, uh, um, there was something around um, the P cards and the fiscal code that said that Treasury um, would pay the bills and then do the monitoring of payments post uh, after the uh, debt was in insured on the credit card. We think if there's a, a changing that will allow us to possibly catch a little more savings by allowing us to audit um, in front of that. Thirdly, um, fiscal review, we right now, and this gets into this, this third one is not necessarily one that I'm saying that we need to own because there are other departments that may want to own this, but nonetheless, fiscal review examines um, tax returns that are, uh, that are, have refunds because it's, it's a part of our experience. If cash is being paid, we need to look for erroneous payments. We think that the same level of due diligence, if you will, could be spent on, um, on um, tax returns that may not have a refund, but they may have some other return basis that's not cash related. So maybe pre-screening to see if they have a credit or some other function, maybe looking at that because there may be some erroneous math in that area as well. Fourth, we think that there's a, a way to consolidate contracts across one body across the Commonwealth instead of it residing in a silo inside of uh, our department. We have the e-contracts library. Um, there's a cost associated with us managing that. Um, we think it could be better served perhaps under another agency, maybe Penn Watch, where they consolidate and they have, the, they have the infrastructure and we don't think it's going to cost them more, but again, that's for them to opine, but the, that would, would go in and, and, and provide some cost savings. Uh, thirdly, it's uh, something that we're asking for in our budget, um, excuse me, I'm, I'm saying thirdly, fifth, <laughs> um, is something that we've asked for in our budget, which is to allow us to modernize the Bureau of Unclaimed Property um, technology platform. Um, it's going to provide a real value, real cost savings if you allow us to, to do that. And six is something I've already brought up, which is the idea of consolidating where the administration is talking about preliminarily consolidating the investment activities across uh, into maybe more centralized functions to lower cost. So those are six points in that document. Well, appreciate that, Don. We definitely will read this document thoroughly. Yes. I know you mentioned unclaimed property twice, and I'm, I know I'm guilty. I've seen my name in the paper twice, and I haven't even applied for it. But um, you said in 2015, we realized $550 million net benefit to the general fund. I just wondered if you had any predictions for future years, what you think we would annualize every year. Yeah, I think the, the, the governor's budget calls for some $290 million and, uh, or so and another $270 million, which is back to normal. I mean, we had this, as you know, this uh, the dormancy period sort of collapsed by two years from five to three, and that, uh, that gave us a big bump. It's an artificial bump. Don't rely on that money. Okay, it was an artificial bump, $550 million. Now, I also will tell you as a, as a CEO that that money is actually a liability as much as an asset because that $550 million in, in, perpetu in perpetuity is, is owed to someone. So people can come back and claim on that $550 million. 
So in reality, you should think of that as a zero-sum basis in, in your operations. We get to use it now, but it really is zero-sum because it's also a liability. So for people like me, anyone can claim it that it's O2 forever? There's no statute of limitations. Thank you, and thank you, Mr. Chairman.